praise the privilege of worshiping you through the study of the word. We bless your name and I set you anoint your people with eyes to see and ears to hear. Anoint your servant with your word. As we empty ourselves vessels for your use, yield to your Holy Spirit and tell you you are welcome in this place. We bind you, Satan, all territorial spirits, all strong man spirits, familiars, ancestrals, disembodied spirits, all who project, all spirits of religion and antichrist and Belial and Python and witchcraft and Jezebel and Lilith, uh, all spirits not of the Holy Spirit. We're loosed. You are cast out. The saints said in agreement. Amen. <clears throat> we our discussion on we have been talking about tripartite man, spirit man, soul man, physical man. We have completed our discussion of the spirit man and the things of the spirit. We are now going on to discuss the soul man. And one of the things that we said in our previous uh, sessions was that the soul needs to be saved just the way the spirit man needs to be saved. And we have been talking over the past several sessions about the process of the salvation of the soul man. And one of the things that we talked about in our last discussion was the fact that the maturation of the soul, the perfection of the soul, is a process of becoming, which is the work of the Holy Spirit, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, in the person. Philippians 2.13 says, It is God who is at work in you to do his will and good pleasure. In other words, God does it. Then the scripture says in Philippians, He who has begun a good work in you is able to bring it to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. In other words, the, the scripture establishes clearly that it is the Lord Jesus Christ who does it all. Okay? And we also said in our previous sessions that unlike the spirit man, which is immediately and completely perfected, the soul man is not immediately and completely perfected, but that is a lifetime process. We talked about that process last week, and we established in our last session that that process is not one of self-effort, but it is one of yielding to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to divinely possess the individual so that the Holy Spirit can work his work in them and through them. Now, in tonight's discussion, we want to move on and we want to look at another aspect of maturation of the soul. And we want to ask the question, of uh, the person's soul condition, and that is this. How do you know when there is a problem in the maturation of the soul, whether that problem is uh, due to a problem or a work of the flesh, or whether that problem is due to the presence of a demonic spirit and is being ministered? We must always keep in mind that some of these problems uh, are uh, also generations' curses that need to be broken. There can be, remember, soul is mind, will, emotions, huh? There can be generational emotional problems that run in family lines that have to be broken by repenting of all sins of the ancestors and predecessors on all sides of the mother's two families, the father's two families, those of the spouse, and those of any person from their past, uh, and then uh, acknowledging why the, uh, why the repentance is, is uh, being made, and that is uh, according to Leviticus 26, 40 to 44, because God says that the sins of the ancestors must be confessed because in what they did, they acted in hostility to me and grieved my Holy Spirit, see? So doing that, we take away the generational aspect 
of the soul problem. And then we ask the question, well, how do we know now whether what we are seeing is due to a work of the flesh or is it due to a demonic spirit? The answer to that can only be discerned, number one, by word and knowledge of the Spirit. In general, however, keep this in mind, that if it is only a work of the flesh, then the behavior is under the control of the person in his will. However, if the behavior is habitual, if the behavior is such that uh, the person uh, does not have the will to overcome on his own. Chances are it is demonic. Why? Because Paul said in Romans, uh, he who sins becomes the slave of sin, right? And then in Ephesians, he talks about the person subjecting himself to the elemental spirits of the world and coming into bondage to them again. Huh? Do you remember that? Okay. So, uh, what we see from all of this is that there has to be an assessment of what the problem is with the soul, and that assessment can only be had through discernment and by determining what part the individual's will plays in it. Is he free to quit on his own, or does he find that no matter how hard he tries, he can't quit on his own, okay? Now, there is a particular problem uh, or aspect of the maturation of the soul that I want to talk to you about in this aspect tonight, and that is uh, what is called maturation arrest. And in order to better understand that, I want to look first, uh, or talk first about a couple of scriptures. The first is that uh, 1 Peter 5.10 says, He, that is Jesus, will perfect all things concerning you. Huh? I'm sorry, uh, not 1 Peter 5.10. That's uh, Psalm 138, verse 8. I'm sorry, Psalm 138, verse 8. He will perfect all things concerning me, it says. Huh? Okay? Now, the word perfect in the Hebrew and in the Greek means to make spiritually mature. Okay? It doesn't mean, to, it doesn't mean that you are perfect as God is perfect, because if you were, you would be he, wouldn't you? And you are not uh, God, therefore you're not equal to God, and you would be as perfect as he was. No, it doesn't mean that. It means spiritually mature. Okay? Now, understanding that point, you must understand that there are experiences and there are problems which can arise in a person's development that can stop or arrest the process of maturation of the soul, okay? And that is what we call maturation arrest, okay? When a policeman arrests someone for speeding, he stops them dead, doesn't he? And that person can't go on until that policeman is through with them, huh? And it usually costs you a ticket and a penalty, huh? Well. Soul arrest or maturation arrest of the soul is a similar problem, you see? And uh, it creates a particular ability for the enemy to attack. See? And that's what its significance is. Because the Bible shows us there are stages by which the soul develops. If Satan can stop the development of the soul at an early age or at an early stage or hinder its maturity or maturation, okay, he can do several things, okay? The first thing that he can do is he can keep the child from Christ. 
The second thing that he can do is he can keep the soul life from maturing or formation in Christ, okay? And the third thing that he can do is he can thwart or destroy God's plan and purpose for that child, you see? By using that child's flesh to strive against the spirit. That's Galatians 5.16, huh? The flesh strives against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. See? Galatians 5.16 and 17. So that in soul uh, arrest or maturation arrest of the soul, okay, the purpose of it is for Satan to thwart the spiritual growth, the spiritual maturity of the individual so that that individual can never come to a fullness of the faith walk with Christ because Christ has a specific regard for children. Huh? Okay? A specific regard for children. Now let's look at that a moment if you will. Uh, look at Psalm 127, verse 3, and let's look at this, okay? And you'll see why Satan uh, puts such a great emphasis and effort on trying to cause maturation arrest of the individual, okay? Psalm 127, Verse 3 says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. That's how important children are to God. Okay? Then in Proverbs 17.6, go over to the next book. It says, Grandchildren are the crown of old men, and the glory of sons is their father's. Okay, so Pastor Dave, you have grandchildren, so you must be an old man. <laughs> He's taking the glory too. <laughs> okay, now look at Acts 2.39. Let's go to Acts 2.39. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to just give a background perspective of the way God thinks about this. Okay. Acts verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 39 says, For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call to himself. See, the purpose of the Lord our God is to call as many as possible to himself. Okay? That is the importance of children. Okay, and then in 2 Timothy 3.15, 2 Timothy, it says that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. See, so God's position is that even children should be nurtured in the scriptures. Okay, that they would come to saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so what does all of this mean? This survey of scriptures means that God's grace is upon children. Okay, God's grace is upon children to bring them to a spiritual maturity. Okay, but sometimes things happen to people in their soul development which hinder that spiritual maturity. Now, there, the process of spiritual maturity uh, begins in childhood, goes on in young adulthood, and goes on to full adulthood. Okay, and Paul talks about three aspects of the development of the soul. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 John. Chapter 2, okay, 
And listen to what Paul says in verses 12 to 14. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name. He's giving an assurance here. Okay? I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him. You have he who has been from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I have written to you, children, because you know the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. You, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, you have overcome the evil one. Okay? Now, what's the point? The point is that Paul here is talking, he knows they're all saved, doesn't he? Or he's talking to believers. So what he's talking here to is about their level of soul development. Notice that he says there are little children. Okay? And he says, your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. Why? Because little children need assurance that their sins are forgiven. Little children need assurance that they're okay with God. You see? And there are people who get born again and their soul man comes into the kingdom with their spirit man and they, they need, young Christians need that assurance of their soul. Okay? That they're okay with God. There is, then he says, there are young men Okay? And he says, you have overcome the evil one. See? When a person's soul is young, okay, that is the period of their development where they engage in spiritual warfare and they learn the power of spiritual warfare, who they are in Christ, and they learn to overcome. See that? Okay? So there are soul levels, where some are children, where some are young men, and then he says, some of you are fathers. Why? Because you know God. In other words, you have entered into fellowship, okay, through the application of the word, okay? So here Paul says that in the development of the soul, there is a level where our soul is first a child, then it's a young person, and then it's an adult. Okay? That's what he's saying here. All right? So, in this uh, grace that God puts upon children, God's intent is that the soul evolve from childhood to youth to uh, fatherhood or adulthood. Okay? That is the natural process of the development of the safe soul over a period of years uh, until it is ready to go home to the Lord, the day of Christ, which is the, the time of going home to the Lord or the rapture, whatever occurs first. He who has begun a good work in you is able to bring it to completion in the day of Christ Jesus. The day of Christ Jesus is the day that uh, the rapture occurs or the person dies, whichever uh, uh, comes first. His personal rapture or the rapture of the church. Huh? Okay? So now understanding what God's position is and how God wants the soul to evolve unto adulthood so that every man is a father, every uh, woman is a mother in Christ. Okay? Uh, to uh, and has that position of fellowship with the uh, f uh, with the father. Uh, we then ask the question uh, as to how then things can go wrong. Okay, and the answer to that is through soul arrest or maturation arrest of the soul. And that may be a work of the flesh, it may be generational, it may be from traumas, particularly repeated psychic or emotional traumas, or repeated physical traumas, where the person becomes so fearful that they are afraid to go forward. Now let me give you a perfect example of maturation or soul arrest. You see it in people 
who uh, were threatened abortions, but their mothers decided not to abort them. You look at those children as they get older in their first six years of life, almost all of them are fearful children. Almost all of them. See? Now, why? Because in the womb, remember, the infant is in the womb, the fetus, but the soul and the spirit are, are intelligent and understand. See? And they hear the talk about abortion and stuff like that. And that creates a fear. And the child develops within the soul life a fear of being birthed into, out into the world because if things are that dangerous here in the world, what's it going to be like out there? You see? And they get birthed and you look at these children. Okay, of course mom and dad don't know anything of what happened, but they wonder why are these children so fearful? so fidgety, so nervous all of the time because of trauma, intrauterine trauma, trauma in the womb, see, that uh, has threatened their very survival, their very existence, you see. Not only that, but it's a form of rejection, you see. You know, why do they want to kill me? Because I must be something bad or evil? Or, you know, what is wrong with me that they don't want me? What is wrong with me that they don't like me? You see, these things we know from healing the inner, uh, from inner healing sessions, we know this uh, from uh, uh, doing a, a ministry in the Spirit, by the Spirit, that uh, these uh, people have had trauma before birth. See, may have had rejection at birth or after birth, you see, or given away, you see, uh, for adoption or things like that. And they need a healing of all of these soul traumas so that they can be called forth to the maturity of the soul, you see, in Christ and get on with God, okay? Now, uh, having said that, I want to talk to you then about how these traumas occur and what the consequences are and when uh, and how a person uh, opens up the door to a spirit of maturation arrest. Okay? We talked about the other sources. I want to talk now about when it's a spirit. Okay? The spirit of maturation arrest. This is also called in uh, deliverance ministries uh, the uh, spirit of developmental arrest or the spirit of arrested development is another thing you will hear it referred to. Okay? I have always referred to it in the past as the spirit of maturation arrest because that's the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me. Okay? Uh, and I think it adequately dem uh, uh, describes what that spirit ministers, okay? Arresting of the soul's development or the soul's maturation, the soul's maturing, okay? And how can you tell when a person has this, okay? Let me give you some of the characteristics or symptoms that these folks have in their soul life when you look at them. The first is they have a hesitancy to walk in the spirit. Okay, they're afraid to walk in the spirit. And the reason that they're afraid to walk in the spirit is because they have a fear of being deceived. Very common. Okay, people who have arrested development or maturation arrest, okay, have a fear of being deceived, a fear of being deceived by pastors, a fear of being deceived by spirits, a fear of being deceived by others, you see. Uh, they tend to be suspicious, okay. A, thir uh, 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 a third uh characteristic of people whose soul is arrested is that they show cloudy thinking. Cloudy thinking. Okay? They don't think clearly. Uh, four, they have a childish understanding of things. A childish understanding of things. 
They see things from the eyes of a child. Okay? We once had a very disruptive person in this church who was 61 years old who had a uh, maturation, a spirit of maturation arrest due to repeated childhood traumas. And any time this person would use their defense mechanisms, their defense mechanisms were always very childish and inappropriate. See? And the reason was because their soul was that of a 9 or 10 year old. See? They had the physical body of a 61 year old, they had the soul life of a 9 or 10 year old because they had been so wounded and so hurt and so beaten down uh, and oppressed in their childhood that they were afraid to come forward. Say, Now what's the problem with that? The problem with that is that if you are uh, a 45 year old person in a 10 year old body, your behavior is going to get you in trouble. Right? Especially if you're working among adults continually. Right? Because your responses will be that of a 10 year old. You get what I'm saying? Okay? And that's what happens with these folks. Okay? And their soul man has to be healed and has to be called forth to maturity in the name of Jesus. So you have, we have for healing on them. Okay? All right? So they have a childish understanding. What else? Fifth, they have childish, childish perceptions regarding their circumstances, childish interpretations regarding their circumstances and their problems. Okay? Six, childish behaviors and defense responses. Okay? Very, very often they'll throw tantrum. See? And they're adults. Okay? But if they don't get their way, They'll throw a tantrum. See? All right. And seven, they lack an understanding heart. Why? Because they lack formation in Christ. See? They're arrested. They're at that childish level. You see? You ever see? How many little children do you know who have an understanding heart? Right? They hit their brothers and they hit their sisters and they push them and take the bike from them. And the kids cry and they turn their back on them. They don't care. They want the bike. <laughs> right? You see? There's nothing understanding about their little hearts uh, at all. God bless them. But this, why? Because they haven't had a chance to grow into it yet. Huh? Okay? All right. Here's a very interesting thing about people who have a spirit of maturation arrest. Okay? Almost all of them know that they have that spirit. In other words, if the spirit of maturation arrest is there, okay, those who have the spirit are aware of it. They know something is wrong with me. I just can't be like other people. See? Okay? And the key or the hallmark sign for someone who has soul arrest in their development, okay, is that of emotional or behavioral immaturity which persists over time. See, that's the hallmark sign, okay? They're the same people at the age of 40 that they were at the age of 20, and at the age of 20 they're the same that they were or at 40 that they were at the age of 12 or 14, and at 20 they were the same as they were at the age of 12 or 14, and they have not matured. See? That's, that's the hallmark sign. Okay? All right? You will discover that they handle things the way a child would. Okay? They handle arguments the way a child would. They handle their finances the way a child would. Okay? They handle offense the way a child would. Okay? Um, if you look at their work history and the way they've held jobs, you'll see 
It's the way a child would. <laughs> you know, they probably lose them frequently because kids don't have a lot of attention or concentration, do they? You see? Okay? Now, uh, they tend to be somewhat cruel. They tend uh, to be jealous. They tend to be competitive. Okay? And they tend to show anger easily. All right, these are all characteristics of these folks, okay? Now, there are various deliverance ministries who have, uh, over the years, treating these folks and, and dealing with them, have uh, observed the stronghold and the spirits that work with the spirit of maturation arrest, okay? And... So what do you see working? Okay, the first one that's most, uh, that's commonly seen is a pouting spirit. Okay, now whenever you see a child who pouts or has a pouting spirit, I got to tell you something. It's the opinion of, of uh, deliverance ministries that that's a very dangerous spirit. Okay, the reason is because it's the spirit which brings in more dangerous spirits. So whenever you see a child who pouts frequently, okay, you must uh, deal with that right away. And nip that in the bud, bind that spirit and pray over that child in tongues until that behavior stops. Pouting, it's when a child goes like this, like that. How'd I do? Did I do well? <laughs> you see? A, pout a pouting child is a child who huffs and he just, you know, he goes like that, okay, gets angry and he, his anger is silent anger and he withdraws and he puckers up his, his lips, okay, but that's uh, 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 a real problem. And it should be dealt with promptly by binding that spirit, binding Satan and the strong man first, breaking generations, curses, and by casting that spirit out in the name of Jesus, uh, even if you have to do it in tongues until that child's behavior uh, stops. Uh, and, and the reason for it is because it's one spirit that will bring in more dangerous spirits. Say, that's the reason, Okay. Uh, when it gets displeased with someone, it tries to get even by bringing in more problems. Say, uh, okay, other, okay, so the stronghold of spirits that go along with the spirit of maturation arrest is the pouting spirit, stubbornness, childish self-will, Okay, there's another spirit called refusal to grow up. Okay, now for years and years, I called this spirit, and I still do call this spirit, the Peter Pan spirit. Okay, and I do believe that it is a real spirit. Okay, other deliverance ministers call it refusal to grow up. See? But if you see someone that always wants to play, never wants to work, okay, always doing the same things year after year, okay, uh, they probably come from Never Never Land, and they have a Peter Pan spirit, okay? And, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, it is a, uh, it's, it's, probably the one and the same with the spirit of maturation arrest, okay? Uh, rebellion, sloth, okay? There's a spirit called wait on me, and that's what they want. They want you to wait on them, okay? All right? They have what is called uh, in the stronghold an unteachable spirit. Some people call that a brute spirit spirit or the spirit of the boot. Okay? Unteachable spirit. Okay? Another thing you see in their stronghold sometimes is an unreprovable spirit. 
Okay, they don't take correction. Okay? Spirit of lusts because they want their own desires. Okay, that's a big one that ministers to them. The one, uh, uh, the own way spirit. In other words, my way or no way. My own way. Okay? Mind binding spirit. Okay, their thoughts are centered on one thing only, usually self-gratification. Okay, youthful lusts. Uh, no self-control. Impatience. Short attention span. Inability to communicate. and the little boy and little girl spirits. These are all spirits that I've named that are commonly in the stronghold of maturation arrest. Okay? Now, the little boy and the little girl spirit are generally evident from their facial expressions and their voice. They get voice changes, facial expressions, when uh, those spirits are uh, uh, present and by the way, the little girls—I don't know about the little boy spirit, but the little girl spirit in particular is uh, a spirit which is frequently associated with obesity. Okay, and many adults who are obese have a little girl spirit, and uh, it falls into the category of uh, a class of spirits called spirits of eating disorders, okay? Of which the three commonest are the uh, little girl spirit, the spirit of the fear of starvation, and the uh, spirit of obesity, say. Okay? Now, uh, there are other spirits in the stronghold. Uh, competition for love, Competition for position, uh, a spirit called play all the time. And that's what, remember, spirits are named by what they minister, huh? Okay? Uh, spirit of selfishness and a spirit of jealousy. These are all things that go along with the spirit of maturation arrest. These people are very childish in their behaviors, okay, even though they may have a full grown body. Okay? Now, what are the roots of arrested development? Remember we talked about the roots and the fruits, huh? Putting the axe to the roots and, the, the putting, and, and recognizing them by their fruits, okay? The root of arrested development of the soul is usually grounded in fear or rejection, okay? Fear or rejection, all right? Also, it can be fear of performance, fear of failure. Fear of failure to perform or performance fear. Okay? You see it in people, another route, you see it in people who have give, been given a steady ministry of performance-based acceptance. We love you and we accept you as long as you do this or accomplish that. And then when they fail, they get performance-based rejection. See? And they get a steady dose. We love you based on your performance. We reject you based on your performance. See? And they get a steady dose of that, and that opens the door to maturation arrest. Okay, because it's so hurtful, they do, the soul life doesn't want to go forward. I mean, if they're getting hurt so much and they're only nine years old now, what's it going to be like when I'm 16? Huh? I'm going to stay here like this. I'm not going to go forward. But the problem is the body goes forward, the spirit man gets saved and is immediately and completely matured, okay, and then the soul life is left behind, say, and has to be made to come forward. 
say, with assurance and love, being loved unconditionally by the Father, okay? Or showing them the love of the Father, okay? A fourth root is psychic or emotional or physical trauma, particularly repeated trauma, okay? And a fifth root is generational, generations' curses, okay? Now, when this spirit is on board, how do you know it's a spirit and not uh, uh, their flesh? Because if it's a spirit, their will is usually bound, right? Okay, your, your will is under your own control if it's the flesh. But if it's a spirit, a demonic spirit, or, uh, what happens is that they have a habit of these behaviors, a habit of these responses. Okay, so what do you see in these folks? How do they present in ministry? If you're going to minister to them, to them, what should you look for? Okay, one, arrested development of the mind, particularly with chronic use of drugs. Okay, folks who have taken recreational drugs over a long period of time very frequently have difficulties uh, getting on in their mental emotional life. Okay? Arrested development of mind. Okay? What else can you see? Two, undisciplined lifestyles. Because they're childish. They're arrested. See? Three, poor self-control. Four, short attention span. Five, impatience. Six, immaturity in action or communication. Their actions are immature. The way they talk and speak and communicate with others is immature. Okay? Seven, performance difficulties with higher learning. They don't perform well. All right? They get into college, law school, medical school. Okay, and they've got the mind of a 9 or 10 or 12 year old and they're trying to do law school work. So they have performance difficulties. Okay, especially emotionally. It may not show so much intellectually, but emotionally in their ability to handle it. Uh, okay, eight, wanting to always have the last word. Someone who has a spirit of maturation or rest always has to get the last word in. Okay? Nine, childish comments. Okay? They repeatedly take jabs just like a little kid who can't get his way, takes a jab at you to get even. Huh? Let you know he's important and he's there. Right? Okay? Ten, gossip. Eleven, foolishness. 12, instability of behavior. 13, bad habits. 14, intolerance of others. 15, the little boy and little girl spirit behaviors. When those spirits are on board with it. And those will usually be evident through grimaces and changes of facial expressions and change of voice. Okay? 16, they avoid people the same age. Okay, 17, they are short-sighted. They cannot see the consequences of their behavior of their, or their actions. Say. 18, they dress inappropriately for their age. 19, extremes or excesses in dressing, makeup, or hairstyle, okay? A good example, the elderly woman who puts layers and layers of makeup on her face, okay, to try to look younger, when in actuality she makes her look older. Okay, sometimes it's caked on so thick uh, she looks uh, like a clown. You know what I mean? Like she's made up like a clown. You ever see a person like that? We've all... We've all seen that, okay? All right? And you see, this is the soul life trying to hold on to uh, 
the soul life of age 12, 14, 16. See, that's a spirit of maturation arrest, okay? All right, so extreme, extremes or excesses in dressing, makeup, or hairstyle. Okay? 20, seeking parental needs from a spouse instead of from a parent. Okay? Which creates over-dependence. They're over-dependent people. Okay? 21, passivity. And 22, clinging. These are the things you see with these folks. Okay? Passivity or clinging. Like a little kid clings to a parent. Okay? They cling to people. Okay? All right? They're very passive, dependent people, just like a child is dependent on the parents. Okay? And when they have not the will to overcome their behaviors, okay, you're dealing here with a spirit of maturation arrest. Okay? Uh, and their soul development will never come to that maturity in Christ to permit formation in Christ. So when Satan attacks, he particularly wants to attack the child to put that spirit on a child. You see? That spirit on a child will prevent that child, uh, particularly if the parents are not born-again Christians and can't discern, will prevent that child from coming to salvation, will prevent that child to coming to the fullness of Christ and formation in Christ. Okay? We'll th that spirit will thwart God's purpose and plan for that child's life. You see? And this is the importance of evaluating the soul and the maturation of the soul in someone's counseling, you see? Because they need to get the healings of the traumas. What's the remedy? They've got to get the healings of the traumas, right? They've got to be provided with uh, the agape unconditional love and forgiveness that the Father gives because that's the only remedy there is to performance-based love uh, and performance-based acceptance and performance-based rejection, right? The axe to that root is to put the anointed love of the Father on the person and to love them to life and to mature them and bring that soul man through prayer, call that soul man forth to maturity without fear, with, in prayer, see? Uh, ministering to their hurts, praying healing where needed, okay, and uh, breaking generations' curses where needed, okay? And so as you can see from what we've been talking about tonight, the, dis the evaluation of the soul life of the individual is quite different than the evaluation of the spirit life of the individual, right? Because if a person is born again and spirit-filled, their spirit man is immediately and completely matured in Christ, right? Now, they may have a broken spirit. They may need a healing prayer for this or that, okay, to uh, relieve the pain that they have in their spirit from such and such of a trauma or another trauma, okay? But that still uh, uh, dealing with the spirit man s does not uh, negate the need to deal with the soul man. The soul man must be evaluated. The soul man must be looked at. We must determine what level of maturity is this person at that Paul is talking about in 1 John 2. Are they uh, little children, fearful, needing reassurance of their salvation and of everything else? Are they young uh, Christians who have enough maturity that they have overcome the evil one? That is, they have enough confidence in Christ and enough confidence in themselves to engage in spiritual warfare in warfare for the, their loved ones and themselves. You see? Or are they mature in Christ uh, where they are fathers who know God, as Paul says in 1 John 2. Okay? In other words, they are in fellowship and in unity and in communion with the Father. You see? So that uh, their soul life has come to maturity the way their 
uh, spirit life has come to maturity. And of all of those three levels of maturity, which is the one that we're going to pay particular attention to when we counsel and evaluate these folks? It's going to be to see uh, if they uh, are still at the soul life of the child. Huh? The soul child, right? Why? Because that's where Satan attacks the most. And if these are mature adults and they're showing all of these characteristics, all of these signs, all of these other spirits or even a number of them in the stronghold with that spirit of maturation and the rest, you can only conclude that this is a person, okay, who has soul arrest and arrested soul development and needs healing and needs deliverance and needs counseling. See, in order to overcome. And for most people, it's a process, okay? But once uh, it's recognized, you see, you can initiate those remedies of ministry which are necessary because without it, they cannot get on with God. They've got to get on with God, you see? And you can't get on with God if you have a fear of God. You can't get on with God if you're trapped okay, with the mental thinking of a 15-year-old when you've got a 48-year-old body, okay, you see? And God only knows how much of this has gone on in the church unrecognized, you see? Because in most churches, they don't do any kind of counseling. They, do, they counsel with the Word, okay? But sometimes the Word isn't enough, it's a hard thing to say, but you've got to realize that everything in the kingdom you have to take possession of, I have to take possession of, right? And God has also not only given us the word, but he's given us healings. He's given us deliverance. He's given us wholeness. You see, there is a finished work of the cross to take possession of, but we have to do that. You see? Okay? So the word could tell us about that, huh? in which case we are a hearer of the word. But the scripture says it isn't the hearer, it's the doer of the word who inherits the kingdom. Therefore, we've got to go out and take that and apply it, right? And that's when the soul man is brought into maturity with repeated application. You see, repeated application of the word, repeated application of the prayers, uh, in taking possession of that finished work of the cross through circumcision of the heart, through healing prayer, through deliverance prayer, through faith confession. See? Calling forth that soul man in the name of Jesus and assuring it of the love of the Father and that it will not be harmed in Christ. See? So what we have done up to this point now is we've looked at uh, the... Uh, soul from the aspect of uh, what the scripture says about it. We've looked at the soul man from the viewpoint uh, of uh, what can happen to it. We've looked at the soul man from the viewpoint of its development and maturity and formation in Christ and what could interfere with that and that interference can either be the flesh or it can be a spirit. Uh, it can be hereditary, it can be acquired by their own actions, okay? Regardless of what it is, we have to look and see uh, what th uh, the associated behaviors are, okay? And the clue, the hallmark, as we said before, uh, is that if you see a person who is an adult but whose behavior is inappropriate for their adulthood and is childlike in its, in its ways and attitudes. Uh, and all of those other things, or some of them are on board with it, think in terms of this person having an oppression by the spirit of maturation arrest. Amen? Amen. Father, we give you thanks, praise, and glory for this uh, revelation that you have brought forth uh, to us. Uh, we ask that you get it into our spirit, man, so that when we are able to minister to others, we can see if this is uh, going on in their life, 
keeping them in a bondage that, uh, in which they cannot go forward, Lord. Uh, and give us godly wisdom in direction and in what to do. Lord, that the captives may be set free for your glory. In your name we pray, and we give you all the glory in the saints' sudden agreement. Amen. Anybody want to ask any questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh huh. Right. Okay. And that she wants to lift them, but I see the difference on all the children. Uh huh. Except, except the, the, the face, she doesn't care about that. We're talking yeah. the makeup. The children is a baby, but she always say, Oh, why am I like the children? I always want like to play with children. She was just telling me, I, Why can't I keep a job? But I have never worked with Rachel to know how she works, but I live with Rachel, so. I know a lot. So we were thinking of people that did bad to us in Haiti, which, you know, family and stuff like that. But then God, and on my way, I asked God for a revelation of that. And then, God gave it to you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but Rachel, Rachel has been saved. And, and Rachel, if she thinks she can go in Christ, but no, like last night I said, Rachel, you have to go to Bible school. I went to the uncle and I said for three days, and you call that Bible study, you don't even want to watch TV, because I was telling her what Richard has in the womb, and I don't want to keep my son out, I'm praying, but there is a spirit ministering to Richard, he's bringing stuff into the womb, and he doesn't even understand. And she's telling me, who's telling you the stuff? I said, well, I learned a lot from my pastor and TBN. But then tonight, you gave it to me all. <laughs> so I want the tape, because I, she would not listen to me, but maybe my, my cousin that I brought here, Michelle, uh, would give it to Michelle, so Michelle, because when Michelle talked to her, Michelle, take those spirit into that TV child. She just stand and listen to Michelle, but to me, it's like, I don't know anything. I don't know enough to tell her about the parts. Right. So that tape really fits Rachel, and she can every way, and every way. Not, not all the stuff that you were saying about me. I'm afraid of, of going to people, you know. Yeah. I, By the way, uh, one thing I did not mention is this probably is a, an extremely common spirit. But she never told me she didn't want my sister. She told me she didn't want me. Yeah. She didn't want me. Yeah. But she never said anything about Rachel. On the contrary, she says, yes. I want Rachel. But Rachel came out with all this stuff. Uh, She's like a baby. Right, but when uh, Ned was 28, they did a blood um, test. Uh, <clears throat> he went for um, some kind of allergies or something. And according to what the doctor said, at 28, he had the, chemi the chemistry of a, a nine-year-old. What, what is that all about? Well, it's very interesting that you should say that. Because I, let me tell you something. Uh, 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 that's probably akin to something else I read. Uh, Wynne Worley uh, wrote about this subject many, many years ago. Okay, Wynn Worley's dead now. He, is, he was at uh, one time uh, in the 50s, or 60s, maybe even the early 70s, uh, probably one of the nation's leading deliverance ministers. Uh, he's written over seven or eight books on deliverance. Uh, I don't know whether they're still uh, uh, on the market or not. Uh, but uh, he, he wrote about this many, many years ago. One of the things that he mentioned uh, in the book was that uh, you can take people with uh, maturation arrest uh, uh, like adults in their 20s or 30s. 
and you can do brainwave tests on them, and they will have the brain waves of a nine or a ten year old. See, and, and the, this is sort of the same thing, but yeah. it's a blood test, see? Yeah. But it supports the same concept. See, the ability of the soul man to affect the physical man. See? The soul that, man can affect the physical man. Is that what, because they kept referring to it as a chemical imbalance. You yeah. know, nowadays, if you're not say it's a chemical imbalance. Yeah, but you have to remember that they're giving a, a humanistic interpretation. Right. You see? to what they're seeing because the scripture says uh, the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. Exactly. See? And what we're talking about are the things of God. Right, right. But possibly you say the baby can hear? Does the baby can hear? Oh, yes. Oh, sure. Yes. The, you got to remember that the soul and the spirit uh are uh, intelligent, okay? The physical world does not obstruct the, pa the, the uh, uh, passing of sound to them at all. So, and also you say that they can bring the person back, whatever soul that is missing? What I was saying is that, you no, know, when they're, uh, uh, well, it, soul fragments can be called back. Because they can be captured by witches and warlocks, you see, uh, or displaced by demons, okay? But when someone is uh, in uh, maturation arrest, you call their soul forward. Then you have to heal their soul. You have to call back fragments, call them reintegrated into the uh, uh, spirit, in, into the of soul life by the spirit of power and might of the Holy Spirit. We'll talk more about this. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. Because we know that the fifth one is a process. Yes. And we know that that one time, yes. one um, yes. that we all have yes. to do so and things like that. And um, would you say that we all at one certain point, we do have like that spirit ministering to us? Like that my, um, our growth and uh, our maturation might be arrested to some point. It's yes. I believe that just about everybody has it in so some common. area of their yeah. life. You say it's common, yeah? I said it's not only common, very common. You see, I mean, even when I was looking at the different things that caused in myself, I look back at my child, okay? I don't have all those things, yeah. okay? But I could see two, three, or four things in there that could apply to me. Which must have meant that at one time I had it. You see, if I don't, maybe I still have it. So does it mean that uh, you must have all, all the characteristics and some of these? Uh, some yeah, of those, uh, some of them. Yeah, see, a person may not have all those characteristics, okay? But they may have some of those characteristics, see? And that's why we said if the hallmark characteristics are there, the main ones, I would presume that the spirit is there. But on uh, the scripture said that the, uh, no matter what, uh, what God has studied in us, he shall come to completion. He has been that uh, no matter what the uh, spirit it is, that uh, what uh, God has in mind for us uh, will come to manifestation. No question. And then what about the individuals are living born, and the mother showed that she doesn't want the baby? Would that affect the child also? My mom took him, sent for, took him to Haiti, and he used to tell me that my mom, but I took him, and he used to tell me my mom doesn't like me, and finally my sister and girl, I got to be told the other day, she's so young, and it's like I didn't have a Gucci. Oh, I was so hurt because for me, Lucy is like my son. I gave him to his mom when I got married because he was no one so old. But finally, she says, Oh, what did my mom do with my son? I feel like I never had that so son. I said, That's impossible. You reject him from your heart from day one. Because you had him, we brought him back to you when he was seven months old. You had enough time to love your son. Yeah. She says, It's like I never had that child. 
And he knows. He's always on the phone with me on Mother's Day. He will call me and say, you are my mother. I say, no, mommy, I'm not your mother. Your mother is in New York. You have to love her. They always say that when a baby is born, uh, uh, the first hand, uh, the hand that you see love is the, uh, is the where the bonding starts. So it doesn't it seem that it, it doesn't have to be your, uh, his biological mother, but if you receive love from somebody, there will be a bond between that baby and the oh, I think that that's true. But I think that uh, that a bonding is a continual process of re exposure, reinforcement. Okay. In other words, I think reinforcement is an important okay. aspect of bonding. I think one of the saddest things I ever saw in my life, uh, a high school friend of mine uh, who married a, a, a young lady who was a high school friend of mine also, uh, in about two or three years uh, after he married her, he got mentally ill, he became mentally ill, he became very depressive. Uh, had three beautiful baby boys with them. They were all a year, three in a row, three years in a row. These kids, I mean, and uh, they were the most beautiful little kids. And uh, after the third year, he became, uh, I guess, manic depressive. And he left them all. And he never came back. Never came back. And uh, I think when they were uh, 12 or 13 years old, he stopped in town once to see them and say hello to them and tell them that he was their father. And then he took off again. Never saw them again. And when they were about uh, 25 or 26 years old, uh, a communication came from the Philippines. I'm sorry, from Hawaii. He had remarried in Hawaii, had divorced his wife, remarried in Hawaii, and it was the second wife who found out the address of his former wife and his kids. And she had uh, sent a, a, a letter to inform uh, the first wife and the children that he had committed suicide. And uh, so I went over to pay my respects around the holidays some uh, six, eight months later. And I was sitting with the boys. And uh, I was uh, uh, talking to them about their dad and letting them know that I knew him well, that he was a high school buddy of mine and all. And I wanted them to understand that he was mentally sick, okay, and that his not being around was not because he didn't love them, but it was because he was incapable, because of his mental illness, see. Uh, and uh, and it, was, it was very interesting to see their response. Uh, one of the sons said to me, he says, well, he says, it really doesn't matter. Uh, he says, it doesn't mean anything to us that he's dead. He said, we never knew. We don't have any bonding to him. See? And it was very interesting. Yeah, there was the recognition, the soul knows. See, I have no bond with this person. Yes, he was my father, but I have no bond with him. I don't know, him. I don't know how to mourn for him. You see? Uh, and, it, and it was such a sad, sad thing to me. You know, uh, it sort of torn me up. What is the most? You know, because I think it might be, it, it should be very painful for three young men. You know, to be thinking, you know, how come he never took an interest in us? You know, you see? But the reason was because he was mentally incapable. But you know, I thought several times, okay? Well, you know, that's true because Gabby.